Almighty God, our Father, we pray for your blessing on your word as we look at your word this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would speak into our hearts, that you would bless us. And I pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit to be able to preach your word. That your word would become for each and every one of us a living word. That you would bless our hearts, that you would bless us, that you would lead us, inspire us, that you would strengthen us. And so, Father, we pray now that you would just bless this part of the service. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Today, in the church's calendar, is the celebration of the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, we know that Jesus was baptized to identify with the people. And, uh, you know, the Lord blessed him and, and touched him when he was baptized. And I... I, I don't want to preach this morning specifically on his baptism. I want to speak this morning on the words of God. When in Luke chapter uh, 3 verse 21 to 22 it said, When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I have loved. With you, I am well pleased. So I want to look at those words of God this morning and see what it's saying to you and I. You see, these words for me are the <clears throat> are really the highlight and the beauty of today's gospel. Where the Lord says, you are my son, whom I love with you, I am well pleased. That God's claim on and call to Jesus and what we might call God's insistence. And I want us to look at that. You're going to hear me saying, speaking a lot about God in, God's insistence this morning. In fact, I could have called the sermon this morning, God's insistence. But I, I, I'd rather call it, with me, God is well pleased. And I want us to look at this for a moment this morning. I think these are words that I'm sure each and every one of us long to hear and believe about ourselves, that God is going to say that to us. So I want to try this this morning. I want you to repeat after me. Are you willing to do something this morning? Let's see how it goes. Now, depending if you're a son or a daughter, I want you to say, I am God's son or God's daughter. I am God's daughter. I am the beloved of God. I am the beloved of God. With me, God is well pleased. With me, God is well pleased. What was that like? Especially that last one. With me, God is well pleased. Was it easy? No. Was it difficult? Was it awkward? Yes. Uh, did you think a little bit too much about yourself? Do you, what do you think about yourself? What do you think about others? What feelings or thoughts did those words evoke in you? Were there any ifs and ands or buts that accompany the words as you said them? If you didn't or couldn't say those words, maybe you need to ask the question, why not? What reasons or excuses did you give for why these words could not be God's insistence for you? And they are, they are difficult words because it's almost as if you, you, you feel in as if you're putting yourself up there, where you, you know, and you're making yourself great. Now, you see, at some level, most of us, we struggle to understand and accept, and accept the pure gift of God's insistence for us. John the Baptist didn't even understand the gift in a way we think about it because remember when he came to Jesus he said to Jesus I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals John says. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. Now this implied is a notion that Jesus is somehow worthy of having the thong of his sandals untied by someone else. If he's not worthy, who is worthy? Why do we always want to make this about worthiness, about being deserving, about earning what we get? Where is God's grace? Where is God's love? You see, this is just not an issue for God in today's gospel. There are no conditions or preconditions to the words that God speaks when He says, You are my son, who I am well pleased, with whom I am well pleased. These words spoken to the heavenly, by the heavenly voice in today's gospel are as much God's claim and call on us as on Jesus. 
Remember, Jesus was a human being even though he was God in the flesh. You see, Jesus is the embodiment of God's yes to us and the world. Regardless of who you are, where you are from, what you have done or left undone, or what is happening in your life today, you get a yes. There is no, there is no one who does not get a yes when they cry out to God, when they, when, they, when they seek Him and when they repent of their sins. Jesus spent His life saying yes. Yes to the poor. Yes to the hungry. Yes to the weeping. Yes to the sinner. Yes to the pure in heart. Yes to those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Yes to the peacemakers. Yes to the outsiders. Yes to the wedding couple who ran out of wine. Yes to the lepers. Yes to the prostitutes and tax collectors. Yes to the 5,000. Yes to the demon possessed. Yes to the woman caught in adultery. Yes to Lazarus. Yes to the woman at the well. Yes to blind Bartimaeus. Yes to the hemorrhaging woman. Yes to the centurion servant. Yes to the widows. Yes to the paralyzed man. Yes to the sick and suffering. Yes to Nicodemus. Yes to Mary and Martha. Yes to Peter, James and John. Yes to Thomas. Yes to Judas. And yes to you and me. Powerful stuff. Jesus is God's yes to us and to the world. Regardless of who you are, where you are from, what you have done or left undone, or what is happening in your life today, you get a yes. There is no one who does not get a yes if they truly repent and turn to the Lord and seek His face. The thing that strikes me most about these words of the heavenly voice is that up to this point, Jesus hasn't done anything. If you think about it, he hasn't preached or taught, he hasn't healed anyone, he hasn't walked on water, he hasn't turned water into wine, or fed 5,000 with fish and loaves of bread, he hasn't raised anyone from the dead, he hasn't died on the cross or been resurrected or ascended to heaven, he hasn't performed or proved himself worthy or deserving, he doesn't even say thank you, I work hard to be a good son. I prove myself to be worthy of what you have said. He simply receives the gift. He lets the words wash over him and drench him. The question is never do I get a yes. Am I the son and daughter of God the beloved with whom God is well pleased? That's a given. That's the gift of God. It's the insistence of God in each of our lives. The only question is whether we can discern that the gift in the in the conditions and circumstances of our lives. Can we discern that gift in the conditions and circumstances of our lives? Can we discern it? That the gift is there and He's saying yes to us. But it's not easy. It's not easy, my sisters and brothers. It means we give existence to God's insistence through our words, our actions, our lives. Even when we do not know where it will take us or how it will turn out. We say yes to God's insistence in our lives. When He insists upon us to be the kind of man and the kind of woman that He wants us to be. God's insistence is not a fairy tale or a story of ease and comfort in which we all live happily ever after. God's insistence in fact is risky. It might come to fruition but it might not. There are no guarantees and we don't always get it right. Sometimes we confuse our own insistence for God, what we want to do. Our own insistence for God's insistence, because we want to do what we want to do. Most times we sense God's insistence in us, but we cannot see from where it comes, what it is exactly or where it is going. It's like the wind. It blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes. Where it comes from or where it goes. John chapter 3 verse 8. Speaking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God that is poured upon His people, that is a gift from God to us that insists uh, through the power of God's Spirit in each and every one of our lives that we become the man and woman that He wants us to be. God demands it of us in a way that we respond to Him. We sense the insistence of love and we say yes to each other when we get married. Isn't that so? 
There's an insistence of love. There's this feeling of love. We say yes to each other. We get married. But we have no idea what our lives and marriage will look like in one year, five years, or 50 years. There's no guarantee of anything. And that's equally true of being a parent. How am I going to be a parent? Or a career, starting a new career. How's that going to turn out? How's that going to be? Or moving to a new town, not knowing what's, what it's going to be like. Now, when Shin and I moved to Gordon's Bay, we just knew this is where God wanted us to be. But I have no idea I would be here this morning talking to you. There's no guarantees of anything. Just knowing that God was in control and trusting Him and saying yes to Him as He says yes to me as I pray and seek His face. Or maybe a friend says something that just won't let you go. A friend is speaking into your life and we know there is something in his or her words calling us towards and for it. But we're not clear what it is. We just know that the words is touching us in a profound way but we're not exactly sure what it means and where it's taken us. And it can come to bring the insistence to existence. That very insistence of God upon our lives as we respond to it brings the beauty of God into existence in our lives as we say yes. Life doesn't work out the way we plan. It doesn't. There are no guarantees for anything. You may not have planned for or expected your first marriage, for example, to end in divorce. But the insistence remains. You are my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. In spite of our failures, in spite of our mistakes, if we trust and believe in God and we follow Him and we give our lives to Him and all the mistakes to Him, we hear His voice, you are my son, you are my daughter, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. That's good news, sisters and brothers. To listen for and follow the insistence comes, come what may in your life. To listen for and follow the insistence of the prompting of God's Spirit in your life, come what may, will transform your life. That's the story of the Gospel. That's the life Jesus lived. After Jesus is baptized, where does He go? He goes into the wilderness. The Spirit of God insists upon him to move, not into paradise, but into the wilderness to be tempted. And then when he comes out of the wilderness, he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's changed, he's transformed through the temptation as he begins his ministry. And he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me in the temple. I've been anointed to bring good news to the poor. Look at Jesus, for, for example, sisters and brothers, in the Garden of Gethsemane and the struggle between His insistence and God's insistence. Father, if this is your will, take this cup from me. I don't want to go through this. And we know the Spirit of God comes, the angels come and comfort Him. And He gives in to the insistence of God rather than His own. Listen to the cry of Jesus on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Remember how his life was changed and enlarged by the insistence of the Syrophoenician woman that Jesus, when he healed her daughter. A child that Jesus originally described as a dog not worthy to eat the children's bread. You see, even Jesus struggled with God's insistence just like we do. Bringing out those things that you and I struggle with. He had to be that way. He had to be human so he could be a blessing to us. That's why the writer to the Hebrew says that we can come to God with confidence because we, we have a God who knows what it means to be human, who knows what it means to, to, to be tempted, what it, to know, who knows what it means to struggle and to suffer. He was human like you and I and he understands what we went through. And so we can come to Him with confidence to the throne of grace. 
God's insistence is not a single moment in time or a once and for all decision for God or us. It is a way of being, a path to be followed, and we have to play it out to the end, even when we have no idea where it is going or what will happen. None of us know the future, but we trust God for it. We follow Him. We are always discerning God's insistence in our lives to hear God's call and claim on us. We follow it, we believe it, we trust it. We are always listening for the yes to which we can answer. The Father, the Holy Spirit, the Son of the living God. We listen for the yes so that you and I can say, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. As He prompts us through the power of His Spirit, as God's insistence probes us and pushes us forward, and we say, Yes, Lord. That's the moment of epiphany for us. The realization of who we are and who God is as we say yes to Him. Some days we wake up excited about looking forward to the new day. Other days we wake up and know from the start that I don't think this is going to be a good day at all. The insistence you see is in both. How do I deal with it? Sometimes we make the right decision and other times we make the wrong decision. The insistence is in both. God's Spirit is in your right decisions and in your wrong decisions. And He will bless you and guide you and teach you in both. Some days we know exactly what to do and other days we have no idea what to do. The insistence is in both. God will show you, even when you don't know what to do. Some days we're clear about our life and the direction we want to go, and other days we're not so sure, we're not so clear. And we wonder and wonder, not really sure about anything. The insistence is in both. It's not as if God insists in one situation but not in the other. You see, He promised us and He's there for us in the good times and in the bad times. And we need to be ready to listen and to say yes, Lord. God is always insisting, saying yes to us, declaring us to be beloved children with whom God is well pleased. Because He knows the struggle of us as human beings. And that is why I think it's so important for us every day to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my mistake. Forgive me all my mistakes. Guide me and help me. You see, my sisters and brothers, this is happening in each of our lives today. In fact, even right now. Even now as you listen to the Word, the God's Spirit is insisting something upon your life. And and even that insistence is something you have to wrestle with and, and try to figure out what is God saying to me this morning. This sermon... Like all my sermons, it's just an attempt to listen for and give words to God's insistence, which I don't always find easy and I have to pray about and struggle with as I prepare it and give it to you. And when it comes to God's insistence, I really only have clarity about one thing, and that's that I don't really have any clarity. That's the only thing I'm sure about, that I don't know everything and I don't have clarity on everything. I wish I did. It's trials and error and discovery and walking with the Lord and making mistakes even though I'm walking with Him and trusting Him and turning around again and starting afresh and saying, Lord, just woe is me. I just need you every second of the day. I have more questions than answers. I don't know about you. But I really have more questions than answers. So don't expect or listen for any answers in the sermon. There aren't any answers in the sermon. Rather listen for the insisting question through the power of God's Spirit as you struggle with it. It was that insisting question that took the people to the Jordan River today as we celebrate Jesus' baptism. It was that insisting question that took the people to John the Baptist to be baptized. They just knew they needed to be baptized. 
They probably didn't even know why, but they knew how they had to go there. There was something prompting them. They were questioning in their hearts. They were hearing and discerning the insistence of God to the Spirit of God. What is your heart's question this morning? What is God insisting upon you in your life? What is the question tugging and putting at you? The question that has a hold of you and won't let you go. What is the question that causes you to hope against hope and pray for the impossible? What is the question that causes you to hope against hope and pray for the impossible? It's the insistence of God's Spirit upon us that makes us continue to pray for even the things that we feel is impossible. We know we just have to. Somewhere, you see, sisters and brothers, in that question is the insistence of God upon your life and upon my life. Again and again, I find that God's insistence is more in the questions than the answers that we might come up with. Because that's the struggle. That's the struggle. I know people say that Christianity is easy. On many levels it is, but it's really not. Because you see the demand on us as children of God to be the kind of man and woman that God wants us to be is not always easy. The gospel itself is quite simple. The truth of the gospel can be quite simple. But to live it out and let it become a reality for us as, the, as God's insistence through the power of His Spirit works in our lives, we discover that it's not that easy. Thank God for the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for walking with us and blessing us and guiding us. And being there for us every time we fall and every time we make a mistake. Knowing that we can trust God and believe that we can say with me, God is well pleased in spite of me. Because at least I know my mistakes. At least I know that my failures. At least I know that I'm human. At least I know that I need God every moment and every day of my life. So whatever the insisting question is, the hard question the hard question is for you today. Please don't answer that question, sisters and brothers. But rather follow it. Try not to answer the question straight away. Rather follow it. Just say, yes, Lord. I don't fully understand, Lord. I have many questions, Lord. I don't fully understand everything about, about you and about life. But I say yes to you, Lord. So much about you, Almighty God, is a mystery. So much about the world is a mystery, but I follow you, Lord. I say yes to you. I follow you. I say yes to you. And let's see where it takes you. Let's see where that journey takes you as you say yes to God's insistence in your life. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for who has been willing to say yes to us in spite of our weaknesses. Thank you, Lord, that we can turn to you in our time of need. So many people, Lord, have discovered your love, your grace, your goodness, your mercy. So many people's lives have been turned around through your goodness and through your love. Father, this morning we want to say yes to you. Your spirit prompts us. We don't always have all the answers. We don't know where tomorrow is going to lead us. But we say yes to you, Lord. We trust you. We believe in you. 
And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to mold each and every one of us. That you would bless each and every one of us. So we ask for your blessing, Lord. My sisters and brothers, I'm feeling in my spirit to do something. Um, I feel the anointing of the spirit this morning. I feel God's insistence in, in me right now to pose a question to you for you to say yes to him. And, and as I said earlier on, it's never easy. But I want to do something now that we don't normally do. We don't always do it, but when I feel prompted by the Holy Spirit, I need to respond and say, yes, Lord. I feel that there are some people here this morning as you're going into this new year who need to hear the Lord saying yes to you. Where you have struggled and where you have wrestled with things. And you've asked questions and you've not always had answers. And I want to give you an opportunity this morning to come up and stand in the front here as an act of faith. Not just uh, worried about the person next to you, but saying, yes, Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm prepared to move forward in the, in the midst of the congregation and say, Lord, I say yes to you. I need you to bless me in this new year. So if anyone here this morning is felt prompted by the Holy Spirit as you listen to me speak, I want to ask you just to come forward and just stand in the front. You can stand this whole place full if you want to. Just come forward now. And then I want to say a prayer. Good. We'll just come up before so people can stand behind you. It's not enough space. Thank you, Jesus. Well, that's right. Come here. I'm just going to give everybody an opportunity just to respond to that word. Please feel free to come up. Don't worry about the person that I am next to you or behind you. It's not about them. It's about you and the Lord. And uh, God's Spirit prompting you. It doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. You know that you've been wrestling with something with your life and you've been troubled about things. Let the Lord lead you, let Him bless you, let Him guide you, let Him strengthen you. Let me hear your, your prayer. If anybody else wants to come, you come up before I pray. Just come up quickly so I can pray for you. I want to ask um, all the folk in the front just to open your hand. For the Lord. The reason why I'm asking to do that is uh, just to say, Lord, I open my hands to you, I open my heart to you. I just, I want to receive from you this morning. I'm not coming to you with a clenched fist. I'm, I'm opening my hands to you so that you can bless me. I want to say yes to you, Lord. You know, God knows your heart. He knows why you're standing up here. And He knows that it, for some of you, it, it took a lot of courage just to come up here. And God knows that. You are loved by Him. And, and I believe that I hear the Lord saying with, that you can, you can say that with me, God is well pleased because of your, your faith and trust in God. And so, for whatever reason you came up this morning, I want you just to right now say, Lord, I stand here in the midst of the congregation because this is this is what I need. This is what I don't understand. This is what I would like you to do for me. This is how I want you to change my life. Whatever it may be, just, just speak it to the Lord in your heart right now. Holy Spirit of the living God, fall upon your people now. Bless them, Lord. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Father, we move by faith, not by feelings, but... I pray that they would feel your presence this morning. That they would feel your touch. That you would touch them right now, Lord, every fiber of their being. And I want to say it's okay to cry. I always say that tears come from the fountain of the soul. It's okay because God, when we feel emotion, it's just because of the Spirit of God touching you and blessing mm -hmm. you. And so, Father, we just pray for each and every sister and brother standing here now. Touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Guide them, Lord. Move them. Bless them. Anoint them with your spirit. 
And when they leave this place of worship, I pray that you would go with them. And we rebuke Satan that he will not steal your word from their hearts. That they will be strong in you. That they would know that they are blessed by you. That they can hear those words with you, I am well pleased. Bless them, Father. Use them for your glory and for the extension of your kingdom. Touch them right now, Father. From the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Bless them, Father. Bless them. Praise you. We praise you. We worship you. We glorify you. Praise you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. You feel the spirit touching you. Sometimes we shake a little bit. That's okay. Sometimes we feel a peace, a warmth. God's spirit works with each and every one of us in a different way. Just knowing he's present with you. Mm -hmm. He loves you. He has a plan for you. So bless my brothers and sisters now, Lord. Bless them. Bless them. Anoint them. Use them. And as they say yes to you, Lord, may your spirit go with them. Give them your comfort. Go shut up again. Shut up. be a good year, Father. A year of blessing. A year of new beginnings. A year of peace. A year of joy. Bless you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. 